July 2024. In the scorched silence of an ancient Martian river delta, NASA's Perseverance rover drilled into a layer of Jezero crater that scientists have dreamed about for decades and pulled out a core unlike any ever seen on Mars. Sapphire Canyon, they named it. Inside, strange mineral nodules and elusive chemical fingerprints emerged, clues that on Earth almost always mean life once left its mark. Could this be the moment when Mars finally gives up its oldest secret? The evidence is stirring fierce debate across the scientific world, because if these hints hold up, the discovery changes everything about our place in the universe. But what exactly did Perseverance find? And how close are we, really, to the proof? Long before Perseverance's drill ever touched Martian rock, Jezero Crater stood out as the most promising place on Mars to hunt for ancient life. The reason is written in its landscape. Spanning more than two kilometers wide, the Jezero Delta fans out in a broad arc where an ancient river once spilled into a vast lake. Satellite images reveal a network of branching channels and layered sediments, the unmistakable fingerprints of persistent water flow. This was no brief flash flood. Geologists estimate that the river carved its channel about 400 meters across over thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of years. Water carried mud, sand and silt from the highlands, building up thick, multi-layered deposits that now form the delta's towering bluffs and terraces. Within these layers, the story of ancient Mars is locked away. Each band of mudstone or sandstone records a different chapter, periods of calm, sudden surges, even times when the lake overflowed its rim. The delta's thickness, up to 30 meters in places, hints at a stable environment where water lingered, and life, if it ever existed, could have found a foothold. On Earth, river deltas like the Nile or Mississippi act as natural archives, trapping and preserving traces of life for millions of years. The same processes could have played out here, with minerals and sediments slowly burying organic matter beneath protective layers. Jezero's mineral map tells its own tale. Clays and carbonates, detected from orbit, signal repeated wetting and drying cycles, ideal for concentrating the building blocks of life and locking them away from harsh surface conditions. The Delta's fine-grained mudstones, especially, are known on Earth for their ability to preserve delicate microfossils and chemical signatures. All of this made the Jezero Delta a prime target. If Mars ever nurtured life, the evidence would most likely survive here, sealed inside the ancient sediments now exposed at the surface. Perseverance's mission was to reach these layers and search for the oldest secrets hidden within. On a chilly Martian morning in July 2024, Perseverance's robotic arm extended over the Chayava Falls outcrop, its coring drill poised for action. Engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory had spent years perfecting this system, rotary percussive, tungsten carbide tipped, built to cut through the toughest Martian stone without shattering the fragile evidence hidden inside. Before drilling, the rover's abrasion tool ground away the dust and weathered crust, exposing a patch of untouched mudstone. Laser spectrometers and high-resolution cameras scanned the surface, mapping the distribution of the black leopard spot nodules that made this site so intriguing. With the target locked, Perseverance began its work. The drill spun at up to 150 revolutions per minute, while a percussive hammer tapped out a thousand cycles each minute, driving the bit into the ancient lake bed. Progress came in tiny increments, a millimeter or two with each bite, pausing often for sensors to check torque, vibration, and resistance. Every step was tracked in real time by the JPL team, who monitored for any sign of trouble, a jammed bit, a fractured core, or shifting material. Six hours later, the drill had carved a perfect cylinder, about 54 millimeters long and 13 millimeters wide, from the heart of the rock. The core, still encased in its titanium tube, was gently retracted and passed to the rover's internal handling system. Now came the ceiling. A titanium end cap was pressed into place, deforming an internal ring with a force of nearly 3,000 newtons, enough to guarantee an airtight lock. The tube, labeled 241, was photographed, x-rayed, and logged before being stowed with over 40 other samples in Perseverance's cache. 
For the engineers, this moment was a triumph. The Sapphire Canyon core, extracted and preserved with no sign of damage, represented the most pristine Martian sample ever collected. In the control room, the drill team allowed themselves a rare celebration. The mission's most advanced sampling system had delivered exactly as designed, capturing a piece of Mars that might one day answer the oldest question in planetary science. Perseverance's drill didn't just pull up an ordinary chunk of Martian mudstone. Inside the Sapphire Canyon core, the rover's instruments recorded a suite of features that, on Earth, often spark talk of ancient life. The most striking are the so-called leopard spots, tiny, dark nodules, each less than a millimeter across, scattered through pale, fine-grained rock. Elemental maps from the PIXL spectrometer show these spots are packed with iron, phosphorus, and sulfur, while the surrounding matrix is rich in smectite clays and ferric oxides. High-resolution scans with SHERLOC, Perseverance's Raman and Fluorescence instrument, revealed something even more tantalizing, organic molecules including aromatic and aliphatic compounds clustered in and around the nodules. These signals, logged in detail and published in Nature in September 2025, stand out as the strongest organic detections yet from the Martian surface. But the intrigue goes deeper. The spots aren't randomly scattered. They form concentric rings with phosphorus-rich cores wrapped in iron-sulfur bands, a pattern that in Earth's ancient lake sediments, often points to microbial mats at work. In those settings, bacteria drive chemical gradients that create exactly this kind of zoning, building up minerals like vivianite and grigate as they churn through iron and sulfur in the mud. Supercam's laser spectrometer added more detail, matching the nodule's chemistry to minerals found in oxygen-poor, water-altered environments. Even the texture matches. The spots disrupt the rock's original layering, suggesting pulses of mineral growth tied to shifting redox conditions, possibly linked to past microbial activity. Sean Duffy, NASA's acting administrator, summed up the excitement in a statement. This finding by Perseverance is the closest we have ever come to discovering life on Mars. For planetary scientists, the combination of organic molecules, mineral zoning, an aqueous alteration is as close as Mars has ever come to revealing its secrets. The evidence isn't proof, but it's enough to ignite debate across the entire field of astrobiology. Now the question is no longer whether Mars once had the right ingredients for life, but whether these patterns are the fingerprints of ancient biology, or just the clever work of Martian chemistry. Dr. Abigail Allwood, a leading voice in Martian geology, cautions against jumping to conclusions. She has seen rock formations on Earth that mimic the signs of life almost perfectly, only to turn out to be the handiwork of chemistry alone. Mars has a habit of imitating biology very convincingly, she reminds her colleagues, urging a careful approach to interpreting the leopard spots and organic signals inside Sapphire Canyon. Dr. Carol Stoker, from NASA Ames, takes a slightly different tack. She finds the chemical complexity and patterning in the Perseverance samples highly intriguing, but insists that only isotopic analysis, something the rover cannot do, can settle the question. For her, the next step is clear. Bring the samples home and let Earth's laboratories decide. Alberto Ferrin Fer en an astrobiologist based in Spain, goes further. He argues that Mars is a master of disguise, producing features that look biological through purely geological means. According to Farron, only a returned sample, studied with the full toolkit of Earth science, can separate life from lifelike chemistry. This split in expert opinion is nothing new. The Viking landers in 1976 delivered ambiguous results that haunted Mars science for decades, teaching researchers to demand multiple lines of unambiguous evidence. Even now, some of the original Viking team warn against reading too much into preliminary data, no matter how tantalizing it may seem. But the debate is not just academic. The stakes have never been higher. The Mars Sample Return Program, once scheduled for the late 2020s, is now mired in budget cuts and technical delays. 
Congressional hearings have flagged the project's ballooning price tag, now estimated at over $10 billion, and questioned whether NASA can deliver before international rivals. China's Tianwen-3 aims for a sample return by 2031, raising the specter that the first Martian rocks might land in Beijing rather than Houston. Meanwhile, engineers scramble to redesign hardware and draft plans for a new BSL-4 containment facility, capable of handling any biohazard that might hitch a ride from Mars. Every delay means more uncertainty, more pressure, and the risk that the answer to the life on Mars question could slip through NASA's fingers. The clock is ticking, and the mystery remains unresolved. In July 2024, NASA's Perseverance rover drilled the Sapphire Canyon core from the Cheyava Falls outcrop in Jezero Crater, an ancient river delta chosen for its history of persistent water, just as scientists have long targeted such sites for signs of life. Detailed analysis revealed unusual nodular textures and organic signals, which on Earth often trace back to ancient microbes. Yet, as published in Nature in September 2025, these findings are classified as potential biosignatures, not definitive proof. Experts remain divided. Some point to possible biological origins, while others caution that non-living processes could create similar patterns. The only way to confirm life's past presence is to examine these Martian samples in Earth's labs, a task now delayed by funding and technical hurdles. As of now, the question at the heart of Mars exploration remains open. The evidence is tantalizing, but the search for concrete proof continues, sample by sample, mission by mission.